Hello again, that's Yvonne Ankerman, and I'm one of the, uh, I'm the artist in residence on Noble Caledonia's uh, expedition ships. Now today we're going to do a demonstration on painting the cutest birds around, the puffin. So if you have been on any of the trips that go up the coast of the UK, up the west coast, or uh, Scotland, Norway, the Arctic, you will have seen these little birds. I have painted them many, many times over. They are just the cutest little things, uh, actually much smaller than I imagined when I first saw them. And they've got the most wonderful color in their beak and almost a, a little bit of a clown-like face. And the bright, bright little feet really makes you want to paint them again and again. So today I'm going to do a demonstration in real time. So you can, once you've drawn your puffin, you can follow me step by step. I will take you through the whole process and we're gonna try and make this puffin, or paint this puffin on the top right hand side. And we're going to do it in a bit more of a loose style. So I'm gonna start here, I'll keep the uh, picture up on the top left and I've done my drawing already. And I'm going to mix some of my watercolor in the, in the belly of the puffin, I don't really want to put any of the gray type of colors. So I'm just gonna wet the area with water first. So this is where you want the paint to sit. Whatever area you wet is where the paint will stay. It will not run into other areas as long as you don't move the, um, the board around. And I have decided on a type of turquoisey bluey color because just to give it a little bit more um, color, not, not the sort of gray. And I've splattered a little bit around the outer sides to start loosening the painting up a bit. So don't worry if you feel that this turquoisey color is a little bit dark, you can uh, move it around with your brush while your paper is still wet. And the whole thing about watercolor is that you come back again and again with more color to make it more intense, but you do have to wait for the first section to dry first before you come on top with another color. Otherwise you'll be creating a whole lot of a sort of a bloom type effect or what they might call cauliflowers. Now I'm adding the same color to the bottom of the puffin because of course it always needs almost like a space to sit on so that you feel that he's anchored to the ground a little bit. It's a bit of a shadow if you like. And I've used the same turquoise color. Uh, you can also use a type of bluey or slightly purple color, but even gray, a Payne's gray would be good. But in this case, I've just used the same color so that I start balancing the painting out. So I don't want just one color in one spot. I want to repeat it in different areas. So it's a little bit more balanced. Even when I come in later with a B color, I will add that sort of red color in other parts of the painting just to balance it out. Now here underneath the cheek, you can see from the photograph, there's a bit of a shadow there as well. So we will we will be adding that. And in between these layers, you would, which I have sort of cut out of the video, you would be using a hairdryer to dry the various stages before you go to the next spot. Now remember, don't touch with your watercolor right next to a wet area because your watercolor will run into that area. So you can see I'm going to a different part of the painting. There where I've touched at the bottom, you'll see it's run. At the top in the beak, it hasn't run because it's not touching uh, another wet area. And the whole thing about the puffins is, for me, is, is the color, the color of the beak. Now they only have this color in the beak in breeding time. So the rest of the year, they actually lose, they lose the color. So this is uh, one of the ways they can um, attract a mate. 
and this is when we are most likely to see them because otherwise they at sea for the rest of the year. Now the puffins, um, here you in the photograph you'll see them sitting on grass because in certain areas where the soil is soft enough and that they will uh, nest in, in burrows and uh, therefore you see them on cliff faces, whatever, uh, quite often in the grassy areas. Up in Svalbard, where there is no soft grass or anything, you do find them uh, on scree slopes or on, on cliffs in little hollows where they would then nest. Now, I am not going to put the grass in this particular painting because I just think the green is not going to go with the, the rest of the painting. Nothing wrong in doing that if you would like to do that, but I'm not going to include it here. And I think that is the nice thing about painting. You can decide what you want to add to the painting and what you don't want to add. So it's almost it's a, it's a um, artistic license and you can do whatever you like. Nobody's gonna ask you afterwards, oh, let me see if that is exactly like the photograph. Um, it was sitting on grass, why haven't you planted grass? No, you can do exactly what you want, want to do. So although I am using mostly the traditional colors of the puffins, the dark color that I'm painting here is in fact not black, it is uh, indigo, which is an extremely dark blue color. You can also use something like Payne's gray, or if you do have black, you can add a touch of maybe a, a type of red, a little, a little crimson to it, something to make it not so pitch, pitch black. I never really use black on its own. I would always use it with uh, something else. Again, just splattering here and there just to create a loose look. It always looks darker at first, but it dries a lot lighter. So remember that with watercolor, it will always dry lighter. And that is why quite often we would come over the painting with another layer. So now here in between, I have dried it a little bit and I am coming around with my second layer. This also helps give depth to the, uh, to the painting. And it just sort of creates that secondary um, layer that just makes it more dynamic at the, at the end of the day. And uh, for instance, if you look at the, the feet of the puffin, I would have to come in and put a bit more detail in there as well as in the beak but I'm just strengthening the darker color at the moment. Now, if we are on the expedition ships and we go out in the Zodiacs, uh, quite often you might be lucky to see them on the water. Uh, if they're flying back and forth to their burrows, if you are in that particular area, you might, especially up in Svalbard, you might get them landing on the water around you. And I have been lucky enough to experience that uh, a few times. And it's just wonderful to see them swimming around the Zodiac. They're not shy whatsoever. And they quite often come right up to you, or swim right past you. And they're absolute, absolute joy to watch. I'm just darkening the bottom again. You might think, Again, oh, this is a little bit dark, but uh, just smoothening it out with a bit of water and not forgetting that it will dry lighter at the end of the day. Some details in the, in the feet here. And of course, a repetition from the beak, which is a wonderful uh, balance for this, this particular painting. They also have that little red section above the eye, which I've already put in. Just making sure it's slightly soft, not too hard edges, 
you can always come in what's called uh, with a, a thirsty brush. So you take a clean brush, uh, dab out the water on a piece of paper towel or something, and then you bring that onto your bit of paper that you want to smooth about or your paint that you want to smooth out a little bit. And this just helps uh, spread the paint and uh, take away the, the excess water. Again, this line by the eye is absolutely crucial, which gives them the wonderful little um, unique clown-like uh, look. And you can see the turquoise that I added in the cheek earlier on is almost non-visible. So I'm coming in with a slightly darker color of the indigo, just to make sure I have that at the bottom. And this, of course, creates a slightly more rounder feeling to the head, as well as when I put it in the, the belly, the blue at the top of the chest and at the bottom of the, of the body, it creates that roundness of the bird. So you get a more of a, a three-dimensional feel to it. And felt it was slightly too light at the bottom, so coming in with a darker section once again. Of course, you don't have to do this flattering around. Um, I just felt it gives a nice loose look to the painting. You can do it without as well, like I showed in my uh, in the beginning. Uh, but it feels like it's got a little bit more life to it. Just because they are such comical little birds, um, to, get, to add the sort of splattering and different colors just gives it a lot more life. Stronger definition again. And with the feet at the bottom, don't worry if it leads a little bit into the bottom. It just adds to the little shadow and almost reflected type of shadow at the bottom. This little dot of yellow over here is at the gate of the of the mouth. And that is a, has a very uh, special function. They are allowed, they are able to almost dislocate their little beak and let it open a lot wider so that when they do catch fish, they and they want to bring it back to the nest, that they don't cut the fish in half by closing the beak. And this is a great function, and that is why you often see the pictures of uh, the puffins with all the little sand eels or whatever they've caught uh, in their beak, and they are able to bring them back uh, to their mate or to the nest without cutting the fish in half with their really strong beak. So here is the end result. Um, nice and lively little puffin. I've added a slight color in the um, a highlight in the eye with something uh, called a jelly roll pen, but it can be a Posca pen, anything white. You can just add a little bit of a reflection highlight in the eye and a slight bit of orange just under the belly for the reflection of the feet. To, to stand out. So I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration and I would love to know uh, in the comments below if you have tried it out and how it turned out. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed it and that you will be seeing uh, some of these puffins sometime soon. If you're gonna be going on a trip soon, I hope that you will see some of these cutest little birds around. Enjoy.